Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about some things to think about if you're setting up a home office. And we'd like to thank Swag Money for a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate it. Thomas Jefferson had a home office with a standing desk that he designed. It had six legs for better stability. Hmm. He also had a polygraph machine so he could make a copy of letters that he wanted to save. This was a copying device that had two pens, two inkwells, and two areas to hold the paper under the pens. And the pens were connected with a series of rods and hinges. When he wrote with one pen, the other pen made a copy on the paper below it. How cool, cool is that? Yeah. Super cool, Daisy. <laughs> If you plan on setting up a home office and you have a couple of rooms to choose from, pick a room away from areas that could be noisy during the day because it's easy to get distracted if you can hear a shower, other family members talking, watching TV, making food, or playing with pets. Mm -hmm. And the noise levels can affect your concentration if you need to have online meetings. To help reduce sounds in a home office, you can replace a hollow core door with a solid door and put weather strip at the bottom of the door. Mm -hmm. Have carpet or thick area rugs on the floor. A typical carpet can reduce airborne noise up to 35%. Really? And some thick wool carpet up to 46%. Wow. Yeah. If you're remodeling the room, you can add sound deadening insulation behind the drywall or add sound deadening channels, and then you would put your drywall over that. There are also sound deadening paints. They're very thick with material in the paint that helps reduce sound transmission through the drywall. Cool. Which is wild. Putting up tall bookcases and shelving on the walls will help deaden sound. You can hang large canvas artwork and large cork boards, and there are decorative cork panels that help absorb sound. You can put them up in sections so it almost looks like art on the walls, mm -hmm. or you can cover a whole wall. Some companies that have sound deadening panels for walls, USA on Canvas, it's U-S-A-O-N-C-A-N-V-A-S, GLK Acoustics, it's G-L-K, capital A-C-O-U-S-T-I-C-S, and Acoustimac, A-C-O-U-S-T-I-M-A-C. And then there's a company called Muffle Acoustics that has wall art that deadens sound. Hmm. And Muffle is M-U-F-F-L-E Acoustics. A couple companies that have sound deadening cork for walls, Sustainable Materials, it's S-U-S-T-A-I-N-A-B-L-E, capital M-A-T-E-R-I-A-L-S, and A-M Cork. It's the letter A M capital C-O-R-K. If you get a lot of noise from a room above your office, you can put in a drop ceiling with acoustical tiles and then make sure you carpet that room above your office. Right. It's nice to have plenty of natural light from windows in your office, but if you have a neighborhood with a lot of dogs or you're by a busy street, you can get acoustical curtains or sound deadening curtains. Hmm. Or you can get sound deadening curtains that you use if you have an online meeting. That way you don't have to worry about... Or if you're about... recording a podcast when you're <laughs> close to a train station. Yes, absolutely. There are also acoustical window inserts that cover your window. And companies and products like Indow, it's I-N-D-O-W, Climate Seal, it's C-L-I-M-A-T-E, capital S-E-A-L, and Fantastic Frame will deaden outside noise. It'll also help insulate your window. Cool. If you can pick a room for your home office with plenty of natural light, you'll benefit from how natural light affects the brain. Researchers at the National Institute for Mental Health found that natural light and bright light affects the brain areas that regulate mood. 
They say there's photoreceptors in the retina that sends information to the brain structures that are involved in emotion, reward, and decision-making. Natural light and bright natural light will help improve productivity for most people. Huh. If you don't have a lot of natural light, use multiple lamps so that you get enough light in your office and the right type of light. A study done by the Carnegie Mellon University found that students in classrooms with the largest windows and rooms with the highest lumens had the best overall test scores in math and reading. And in our lamps episode, we talked about some recommendations for light levels in an office. One recommendation was 5,000 to 10,000 lumens. Mm -hmm. And I read an article from Home Depot that recommends 6,000 to 8,000 lumens for a home office. Okay. Which is a lot of lumens. It is a lot of lumens. Check the lumens on the packaging if you're getting bulbs for lamps. If you're purchasing lamps with built-in LEDs, check the lumens and get dimmable lamps and LED bulbs. That way you can adjust the light levels. You want bright light during the day, but you want to reduce light levels and blue light a couple hours before bed. That way your body can release melatonin to help you sleep. Mm -hmm. To give you a feel for the lumens, if you're used to incandescent lights and how much light they give off, an incandescent 100-watt bulb gives off about 1,600 lumens. So if you're shooting for 8,000 lumens in your office, it would be like having 500-watt incandescent bulbs. Hmm. What's great about LEDs, a 13-watt LED is going to be around 1,600 lumens. And if you had five of those, let's say, you're only using 65 watts of energy rather than... Outrageous. Rather, rather than with incandescent bulbs, you'd be using 500 watts of energy. Craziness. When you're picking office lamps and bulbs, get bright white or cool white LEDs. The U.S. National Library of Medicine says studies suggest light in the 4,000K to 5,000K range promotes alertness. 5,000K and higher improves mood, alertness, productivity, and it lowers melatonin levels, which reduces fatigue. You can also use smart bulbs and lamps. That way you can adjust the Kelvin throughout the day. You could have around 5,000K or 5,000 Kelvin which is in the blue range throughout the day, and then go to 2700K, which is in the yellow range, a few hours before you go to bed because blue light suppresses the release of melatonin. Hmm. The Ergonomic Trends website recommends using a mixture of direct and indirect lighting in an office to eliminate dark areas and shadows. You're going to have better productivity and higher light levels. Right. If you're setting up an office and you need a desk quickly and you want it inexpensive, you can build your own using plywood and a couple file cabinets to hold it up, or you can use a countertop. Mm -hmm. And they usually have low-cost countertops at the home centers that were cut wrong or have some imperfections. And we have some tips on different types of desks in our desks episode. Well, I would hope so. And, <laughs> and we have some suggestions on the height of the desk and the relationship between the chair and the desktop. Cool. Plan your desk placement so you get the best light levels from a window without having glare on a computer screen, or during the day the sun won't be in your eyes. Mm -hmm. If you have a nice view out of your window, you can face the window. For many people, a nice view can reduce stress levels, but if you're easily distracted... Facing away from a window can be more productive. <laughs> you can face the door in your office, which is good if you're going to have clients or employees stopping by for work. And then, in that case, plan an area for extra seating and room for extra workspace. Right. Some interior designers recommend facing a wall with your desk if you have a door on one side and a window on the other side of the room for the best balance of light and to reduce distractions. And then you don't have to turn all the way around if you have someone at the door asking a question compared with having your back to the door. If you have your back to a window, you can use light diffusing window treatments that can be lowered when the sun is at a bad angle for your computer screen. And one designer said having your back to a wall and facing the main part of the room or a door can make a home office feel more open and less confining. Right. Like in my home office, I've changed the desk placement a couple of times. 
Now I have my back. Are you more productive? Yes. So now I have my back to the window. I'm about three feet away from that wall with the window, and my desk is now facing the main part of the room and the doorway coming into it, and I have my bookshelves there, and it feels more open. I've got a lamp right off to the side of my desk, so I've got good lighting from behind me and off to the side, and it, it just feels more open. Congratulations. <laughs> The placement of your desk should be balanced with cabinets for storage. If you're going to need file cabinets or extra tables or desks for printers and other equipment, you should lay out a plan on paper. And on then... graph paper? <laughs> yes, graph paper is the best. And then figure out how to lay it all out so it's easy to use all of your equipment and it improves your workflow. Mm -hmm. There are pen holders, paper organizers, phone chargers, and desk organization systems that can make your home office a lot more effective. Mm -hmm. I read an article on the Martha Stewart website. She suggests using dry erase paint on a wall in your home office. And that way you can make checklists, have notes, or keep track of appointments. She recommends the Benjamin Moore Notable Dry Erase Paint. And notable is N-O-T-A-B-L-E. Mm -hmm. This goes over most surfaces like painted walls, wood, glass, metal, and laminate. It's a two-part finish. One style is clear. The other style is white. And it has a 10-year warranty. And we used a dry erase paint in our office. It's the Sherwin-Williams Sketch Pad Dry Erase Coating. It's clear. You can draw on the surface with a dry erase pen and then just wipe it off, which is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Bear paint, it's B-E-H-R, suggests painting walls gray, platinum, or silver in a home office. It's non-distracting and it coordinates well with other decor. They say light green is calming and dark green helps with focus. Cool. A research article from the University of Munich found in a study of how color affects psychological functioning that green enhanced creative performance. Hmm. So either your wall's green, one accent wall green, or lots of green plants in a room. Cool. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, recommends an office chair with lumbar support and height adjustment. They say compare the backrest, the seat, armrests, and the base. The backrest should conform or be adjustable to the curvature of your spine and provide lumbar support. The seat should be comfortable and adjust so your feet rest flat on the floor. Mm -hmm. And your thighs should be about parallel to the floor with your hips slightly higher than your thighs. The armrest should be soft, allowing your shoulders to relax and your elbows to stay close to your body. And the chair should have a five-leg base with casters that move easily. If you have a desk with a built-in power strip or receptacles, you need to be close to an outlet or position your desk so the cord isn't a tripping hazard. You never want to run power cords or extension cords under area rugs or cover them with anything. State Farm Insurance says if an extension cord or power cord is covered, heat can't escape and it can become a fire hazard. They also recommend unwinding cords. You don't want to keep them tightly coiled. Never tape or staple cords to the floor and cover any unused receptacles in a power strip or a surge suppressor with plastic child safety caps. And that's going to help prevent a shock or fire hazard. Cool. Use a power strip that's rated at 15 amps and never plug a power strip or surge suppressor into an extension cord. Use a surge suppressor for your electronic equipment to help protect it. And you can get desktop power strips. Some are shaped like a cube or a tower mm -hmm. with USB ports. So it's nice if you have devices that you're plugging in and unplugging on top of your desk. A lot easier to use than right. having it on the floor. Some top rated companies, APC, it's just the letter A, P, and C. Anchor, A-N-K-E-R, Leviton. L-E-V-I-T-O-N, Belkin, B-E-L-K-I-N, and Trip, T-R-I-P-P. -P. Do you have anything else to add? When you're setting up a home office, spend the money for a comfortable chair, have plenty of balanced light, and pick a quiet area of your home 
or use products to make the space quiet. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 15 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Thank you.